Moby beeped in my ear. You don't get a choice, in a spine-chilling voice. He grabbed me and threw me on the couch behind us. I tried to scream, but he muffled me with his hard metal hand. He pulled down my pants, which is embarrassing enough. Then I remembered we were on a live stream with several elementary and middle schoolers watching around us around the country. I started to cry, adding on to the layers of embarrassment. Moby pulled down my boxers to reveal my erect cock. It couldn't get any worse. He inserted it into his mouth. I thought it would be cold and uncomfortable, but it was nice and heated. I couldn't help coming. I got so embarrassed and I lost my erection, but I didn't need it. Moby well, we pushed one of the buttons on his back panel. I always wondered what those did. A little compartment opened on his crotch and a long black dick looking thing emerged. A big one at that. He bent me over and I gulped. That won't fit in me, Moby, I said, shaking. Moby challenged us by putting himself in up to the entrance of my ass. He took, a, he took a deep breath and let it out sharply as he entered me. I was being f***ed on a live stream with hundreds, maybe thousands of kids watching. Yet somehow it felt good. I was such a slut for getting turned on. <laughs> he started to pump as he thrust it into me. This continued for a couple minutes until we both finished. We both relaxed and cuddled nude on the couch while we retracted his dick. We looked out to see a terrified camera crew. Moby got up and dashed. We ran out of the doors to our studio naked, and we were met with a sea of reporters, all flashing their cameras and writing down their observations. Moby and I kept running, and we never looked back. We got to my apartment and put on some clothes. We got in our car and drove off. We fled to Mexico. I now work part-time at McDonald's to pay our rent. I might have lost my dream job, but I did get Moby. And that's a happy ending in my book.